Unauthorized guests, please exit the chamber at this time. The chair would like to recognize the well-spoken senator from the 53rd. Mr. President, I'm a little lonely here, fell like the Maytag repair man. But it's a beautiful day at our state capitol. We worked hard in committees to make sure we could get all the important bills out today. A moment in history, or no, let me just say the holiday. Today is National Pound Cake Week. You know that'd be something important to me. The journal's been read and found to be correct. Is there objection to dispensing with the reading of the journal? Hearing none, the reading of the journal is dispensed with. Is there objection to the confirmation of the journal? The chair hears none and the journal is confirmed. All senators who have bills and resolutions to introduce, please bring them to the secretary's desk at this time. Mr. Secretary, first reading a reference of Senate bills and resolutions. Senate Bill 230 by Senator Hinson, the 41st, and others, a bill we titled an act to create the City of Tucker Public Facilities Authority and to provide for the appointment of members of the authority to confer State power. State and local government. Senate Bill 231 by Senators Robertson, the 29th, and others, a bill we titled an act to amend Chapter 7, Title 50 of the OCGA, willing to the Department of Economic Development so as to provide for civil penalties. Economic and pen development. Senate Bill 230 by Senators Rahman of the 5th and others, a bill we titled an act to amend Title 31 of the OCGA, Relating to health, so as to repeal the low THC oil patient registry to amend Chapter 34 of Health Title. and Human Services. Senate Resolution 285 by Senator Karen Shack of the 48th and others. A resolution encouraging the President of the United States and the United States Congress to enact legislation and screen. Rules. Mr. President, that concludes the order. First reading a reference of House bills and resolutions, please. House Bill 39 by Representative Belton, the 112th and others. A bill we titled an act to amend Chapter 33 of Title 43 of the OCGA relating to physical therapists so as to revise licensing provisions to enter into an interstate compact. Health and Human Services. House Bill 193 by Representative Donahue of the 30th and others. A bill we titled an act to amend Article 1 of Chapter 1 of Title 7 of the OCGA relating to provisions applicable to the Department of Banking and Finance and financial institutions generally. Banking. House Bill 279, Bears and Lumsden, the 12th, and others, a bill we titled an act amend Article 1 of Chapter 2, Title 48 of the OCGA, relating to state administrative organizations so as to provide that law enforcement officers appointed by the state revenue. Public safety. House Bill 281, by Representative Anulwitz of the 42nd, and others, a bill we titled an act amend Code Section 16613 of the OCGA, relating to penalties for violating Code Section Judiciary. House Bill 290 by Representative Cooper of the 43rd and others, a bill we titled an act amend Chapter 17A of Title 31 of the OCJ relating to the control of HIV so as to establish a pilot program to provide health and human services. House Bill 396 by Representative Washburn of the 141st and others, a bill we titled an act amend Article 4 of Chapter 9 of Title 16 of the OCJ relating to fraud and related practices so as to provide that it shall be unlawful for a person with judiciary. Mr. President, that concludes the order. The Secretary will now read reports of standing committees. <coughs> Mr. President, the Senate Committee on Judiciary has had a good race of the following legislation instructing we report the same back to the Senate for recommendation. Senate Bill 150 to pass by substitute, Senate by Senator Stone of the 23rd. Mr. President, the Senate Committee on Finance has had a good race of the following legislation instructing we report the same back to the Senate for recommendation. Senate Bill 138 to pass by substitute, Senate by Senator Huffstetler of 52nd. Mr. President, the Senate Committee on Urban Affairs has had a register race and final legislation instructing we report the same back to the Senate for recommendation. Senate Bill 134 to pass, Senate by Senator J Jackson of the 2nd. Mr. President, the Senate Committee on Agriculture and Consumer Affairs has had a good race of final legislation. Should we move forward the same back to the Senate for recommendation? Senate Bill 211 to pass, and my Senator Wilkinson the 50th. Mr. President, the Senate Committee on Reapportionment and Redistricting has had a good race of final legislation. Should we move forward the same back to the Senate for recommendation? Senate Bill 177 to pass, and my Senator Brass the 28th. Mr. President, Senate Committee on Education and Youth has had a request to raise some final legislation instruction. We were saying back to the Senate for recommendation. Senate Bill 210 do pass by substitute. Senate Bill 108 do pass by substitute. Senate Bill 212 do pass by substitute. Senate by Senator Martin of the 9th. Mr. President, Senate Transportation Committee has had a request to raise some final legislation instruction. We were saying back to the Senate for recommendation. Senate Bill 103 do pass by substitute. Senate Bill 200 do pass by substitute. Senate Senator Beach of the 21st. Mr. President, the Senate Committee on Rules has had a consideration of final legislation instructing we're saying back to the Senate for recommendation. Senate Bill 227 do pass. Senate Resolution 264 do pass. Senate Resolution 275 do pass. And my Senator Mulls of the 53rd. Mr. President, the Senate Committee on Rules has had a consideration of final legislation instructing we're saying back to the Senate for recommendation. Senate Resolution 202 do pass by substitutes. And my Senator Mulls of the 53rd. Mr. President, the Senate Committee on Ethics has had a good race to final legislation instructing we're saying back to the Senate for recommendation. Senate Bill 213 do pass by substitute, Senate by Senator Kirkpatrick of the 32nd. 
Mr. President, the Committee on Education and Youth has had a consideration of final legislation to remove the same back to Senate Fire Recommendation, Senate Bill 165 to pass, Senate Bill 163 to pass by substitute, Senate Bill 209 to pass, Senate Bill 219 to pass by substitute, Senate Resolution 266 to pass by substitute, Senate by Senator Martin the Ninth. Mr. President, Senate Committee on Judiciary has had a consideration of final legislation to remove the same back to Senate Fire Recommendation, Senate Bill 222 to pass by substitute, Senate Bill 167 to pass, Senate Bill 229 to pass by substitute, Senate Bill 58 to pass by substitute, Senate by Senator Stone of the 23rd. Mr. President, Senate Committee on Regulated Industries and Utilities had, uh, had under consideration of final legislation short to the same back to the Senate Fire Recommendation, Senate Bill 162 to pass by substitute, Senate Bill 214 to pass by Senator Cowsett of the 46th. Mr. President, Senate Committee on Transportation has had a consideration of final legislation to remove the same back to the Senate Fire Recommendation. Senate Resolution 67 to pass by substitute, Senate by Senator Beach of the 21st. Mr. President, Senate Committee on Health and Human Services has had a consideration of final legislation to remove the same back to the Senate Fire Recommendation. Senate Bill 225 to pass by Senator Watson of the 1st. And Mr. President, Senate Committee on Banking and Financial Institutions has had a consideration of final legislation to remove the same back to the Senate Fire Recommendation. Senate Bill 186 to pass by substitute by Senator Senator Ligon of the third. Mr. President, that concludes the order. The Secretary will now read bills and resolutions for the second time. Senate Bill 77 by Senator Moles of the 53rd and other state flags, seal, and other symbols, additional protections for government statutes, statutes provide. Senate Bill 92 by Senator Beach of the 21st and others, professional licensing board ref refused to issue, issue a license borrower in default under an educational loan issued through the Georgia Higher Education Assistance Corporation prohibit. Senate Bill 95 by Senator Robinson of the 29th and others, local government terms for contracts for utility services changed. Senate Bill 122 by Senator Kennedy of the 18th and others, motor vehicle franchise practices protection of certain consumer data and motor vehicle sales or lease transactions provide Senate Bill 144 by Senator Anderson of the 24th and others taxes on tobacco products issuance of special event tobacco permits authorizing off-premises sales of certain tobacco products provide Senate Bill 161 by Senator Timmons of the 37th and others education weighted scores for certain coursework for purposes of determining Hope Scholarship and Zell Miller Scholarship ed eligibility provide Senate Bill 171 by Senator Wilkinson of the 50th and others courts primaries and elections and ad valorem taxation compensation of various local government officials modify Senate Bill 173 by Senator Dolezal of the 27th and others Georgia Educational Scholarship Act Senate Bill 183 by Senator Huffstetler 52nd revenue and taxation each person that files Form 1099-K with the Internal Revenue Service shall also file electronically to the State Revenue Commissioner on or before federal deadline provide. Senate Bill 188 by Senator Walker of the 20th and others, reinsurance of risk, adequate regulation of reinsurers, incorporation of the National Association of Insurance Commissioners, reinsurance model into the Georgia Insurance Code provide. Senate Bill 192 by Senator Jones of the 25th, captive insurance companies, definitions, use of a registered agent, to receive service of processes, letters of credit, provide Senate Bill 202 by Senator Ligon III and others, title insurance, lender security interest, personal property taken by the lender as collateral for a commercial loan allow, Senate Bill 216 by Senator Mullis the 53rd, ad valorem taxation, local governments to accept prepayments of ad valorem taxes allow, Senate Resolution 214 by Senator Heath the 31st and others, state agencies and departments publish the report to the General Assembly by electronic means urge. Mr. President, that concludes the order. Now time for our morning roll call. Are there any motions to excuse? The chair recognizes the senator from the ninth. Thank you, Mr. President. I ask unanimous consent to excuse the senator from the eighth for business in the Capitol. Without objection, the senator from the eighth is excused. The chair recognizes the senator from the 44th. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I ask for unanimous consent to excuse the senator from the 26th. Senator from the 26th, without objection, the Senator from the 26th is excused. Any additional motions to excuse? Secretary will call the roll of the Senator. Signify your presence by voting the yay switch. The Secretary will unlock the machine.
It's now time for our daily devotional. Will all senators please take your seats and cease all audible conversations. It's now time for our daily devotional. All senators please take your seats and cease all audible conversations. Doorkeepers, please secure the doors. I'd like to recognize the senator from the 29th to lead us in our pledge and introduce our chaplain of the day. If you'll please rise with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now the Georgia flag. Thank you. Yeah, there's not many opportunities where you have a chance to not only recognize one of your best friends, but also to recognize the person who guides at times your spiritual need. And I'm honored to do that today. So thank you, Mr. President and fellow senators. Uh, it's my honor today to introduce Dr. James Elder or as known to his friends, Jimmy. He's the pastor of First Baptist Church in Columbus, Georgia. He's a graduate of Mercer University and of Princeton. Uh, he has been mine and Teresa's uh, spiritual guide for several years. So please, my friend, Jimmy Elder. I'm so honored to be here. I respect and appreciate all that you do. Um, before I begin, may I take a moment of just personal privilege and ask you to please remember Harris and Talbert counties particularly today, um, and also our friends in Alabama. That has been uh, a tremendous blow to all of us in the area. Uh, law enforcement's doing a great job. The people in that area are doing a great job, and I think some from here are heading down there. So just know we appreciate your prayers and that everything's going to be fine because of some of the things that y'all have done and some of the people that we have in leadership. So thank you very much for that. I'm honored to be asked by my wonderful friend, parishioner, deeply respected member of our community and strong voice for law enforcement, Senator Randy Robertson from the 29th. I also want to say a word to my friend, Senator Ed Harbison, my senator and a good friend and one who represents us so very well. I bring greetings from Mayor Skip Henderson, the land of Aflac ducks and credit card processing, whitewater rafting, all the things that make Columbus a very special place. And I want to tell you how much we appreciate all you do for Columbus always. Thank you so much. Sometimes you just see it coming. A friend of mine who's a minister talked about a revival he preached, and as he was preaching the sermon, he got in the middle of it and he used the word breeches instead of the word pants. And he saw a lady sitting in the back and he knew when he said that, that he had really offended her somehow or another. And she scrunched up her face. And at the end of the time, when he left the pulpit and he stepped down to the side, she made a beeline toward him. And as she came, her face got harder and harder and her disapproval was more and more evident. Have you ever had that happen with a constituent? You just saw him coming at you and you knew something was gonna happen. And so as she approached him, she, he stopped for a second. He just said, Lord, just give me grace. And so he stood there to take the tongue lashing because he couldn't find a way out. She came right up to him, got right in his face and said, my name is Grace. And he said, oh, Lord, not that kind of grace. <laughs> At that particular moment, my friend realized that he had an opportunity not to just take what she was going to say, but to also turn it into an opportunity to communicate with her. Like Hippocrates, though it were, they weren't his specific words, the concept is for us to do no harm. And as ladies and gentlemen who represent the people of our state as citizen senators, I'm inspired by your efforts. The way that you understand the past, the way that you work in the present, and the way that you pave the way for the future. For my friend to have, the respond, to have responded with an unkind word would have blunted the opportunity. For him to truly seek grace and to listen and to respond with patience 
and with kindness, this could heal the spirit of that lady. Isaiah is one of my favorite prophets, and he wrote echoing the heart of God and calling his servants to responsibility of grace in Isaiah 41, verse 9 through 10 and verse 20. You whom I took from the ends of the earth and called from its farthest corners, saying to you, you are my servant. I've chosen you and not cast you off. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand that they may see and know, may consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord has done this. The Holy One of Israel has created it. Today is the day the Lord has given to each of you. He has called you from all across our state and brought you to this place. He has promised that he will be with you and he will uphold you and he will guide you and he will bless you. And in turn, you will become the blessing to others and generations will benefit from the decisions that you make in this place. My alma mater is Mercer University, and there we have what's called the McDuffie Center for Strings. It's a world-renowned strings program. And I was at a trustees meeting, and while I was there, one of the young ladies who is a part of that strings program presented or spoke to the trustees. And when she was speaking, I was so deeply inspired, I wanted to share it with you today. Her name is Mary Grace Bender, and she's from Tennessee. And Mary Grace got up, and when she began to speak, she said, I'm a part of the McDuffie Center for Strings, and said, part of my requirement is I have to practice 40 hours a week. That's my contract. And said, as one who's practicing 40 hours a week, I have conflict, because my parents always taught me that music isn't music until it's heard and said, I'm supposed to practice in this little room and then get out and say, I have practiced my 40 hours. I thought about having to practice 40 hours in a little chamber somewhere. That would have been awful when I was in the band. But she said, let me tell you what I learned to do. She said, I take my instrument, my cello, and I go to different places. I go to the local nursing homes. I go to the Alzheimer's units, places where children are challenged and the Daybreak Center for Homeless in Macon. She said, I go into the middle area to the central room, and I just set up my instrument, and I set up my music stand, and I open my music, and I practice right there. And we began to see that what happened that was a beginning of music that would have been practiced but never heard became a concert for some people, became benefit for her in her practice, and gave purpose to every minute within her life. She began to realize that what she was to do in one place could be of benefit to people in other places. So I reflected on the decision of my friend in the midst of the conflict to seek grace, and I thought of Mary Grace's ideas as a Mercer student to go and take her practice and make it useful. And I thought about the reprise of the Rodgers and Hammerstein song from The Sound of Music that wasn't used in the musical, It was only used on the stage. But it's pointed, and this is what it says. A bell is not a bell until you ring it. A song is no song until you sing it. And love in your heart wasn't put there to stay. Love isn't love until you give it away. Each of you come and you've given your time as citizen legislators, as those who have been willing to take the reins of government for us, and you represent us. As you do your work in this room, may you, in spirit and heart, do it in the waiting rooms of the hospitals. Do it in the homeless shelters across the state. Do it in places where the music that you create here is heard not only in this generation and this day because of the good you do, but is heard in hearts and heard in our government and our lives forever. You make a difference. And what you do will never mean anything unless it's heard in the hearts of your people. I'm proud of you. I love you, and I'm grateful to you. And I know through Randy and through Ed the kind of people we have in this chamber. So may God bless you as the grace of your wise, selfish, good, selfish, selfless good work in the Georgia Senate touches the hearts of individuals throughout our state now and throughout our future.
Would you bow with me as we pray? Lord, as we bow before you, we pray that we may not just practice, but we may present. We may not just cloister it in a room, but we may take it to the people who need to hear it. That we may not think just on paper, but we may think with our hearts and merge with the hearts of others. Find in us patience and willingness to follow you. Find in you truth, because you promised you are with us. You will uphold us. You will be with us. Bless these who do your work here. In your precious name, amen.
At this time, we'd like to introduce our doctor of the day, and I'd like to call upon the senator from the 41st to introduce the doctor of the day. Thank you, Mr. President. So much. Thank you, Ms. President. We're honored to have Dr. Mark Griffins. He's a pediatric emergency medicine physician in Atlanta. Uh, he's affiliated with many hosp multiple hospitals, including Children's Health Care of Atlanta, Emory's University Hospital, and he received his medical degree from the University of Cincinnati College of Medicine. We're honored to have you here today, and we appreciate you if you say a few words of encouragement to people to live healthy lives here today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you very much, members of the Senate. I uh, bring you greetings from Children's Healthcare of Atlanta and the Georgia College of Emergency Physicians. Um, we appreciate all that you've done. I know that often when people come to the Senate, they are uh, coming with appeals and supplications. I'm just here to say thank you for all that you have done to contributing to uh, the health of Georgia's children and all that you will do in the future. Uh, we understand that a lot of the work that we've been able to do at our institutions is in no small part to what you have accomplished here. We've seen year over year growth in terms of our research, which has spawned clinical programs that are felt not only here in Georgia, but in other countries such as Milan, Italy, and Tanzania, East Africa. And all that has then allowed us to recruit and retain some of the best medical talent in the country. Um, so we look forward to a very good relationship moving forward. We look forward to small events like we're hosting tomorrow, a free lunch for everybody in this room, available tomorrow close to the uh, medical uh, room downstairs, to large events like the GLBC dinner that I was able to attend last week. Um, I saw the person that helped me find my location as I was coming off the elevator. I see a familiar face there. Um, and uh, I'd like to take this opportunity also to make a public invitation to everybody in this house or in this body to uh, come and visit one of our ERs at Children's Healthcare of Atlanta and see the good work we're doing because of all that you are doing here. So thank you once again, and I hope you have a great day. Are there any unanimous consents? I'd like to move on to points of personal privilege. The chair would like to recognize the senator from the 11th. Members of the Senate, uh, I want to take just a minute to uh, ask you to uh, pray for the citizens in uh, southwest Georgia. The minister of the day uh, mentioned Harris and Talbot County had tornado damage. Uh, several of the counties in my district, which had been recently damaged, of course, by Hurricane Michael, had uh, tornadoes uh, last night. Uh, Grady County and Cairo in particular lost uh, many commercial structures in their downtown area. I just got a message they were open as shelter, so obviously there's some damage to some homes uh, where people don't have the electricity or their roofs. A couple of houses in my, my neighborhood who just had their roofs fixed from Hurricane Michael have uh, no roof this morning. So uh, I'd love, uh, Mr. President, if you don't mind, to have a moment of silence for those people who are suffering uh, this uh, second storm damage in southwest Georgia. The senator had asked for a moment of silence. Please rise. Amen. Thank you. Are there any additional points of personal privilege? You have a consent calendar of privileged resolutions before you. Does any senator wish to remove a resolution from the consent calendar? Is there objection to the adoption of the resolution on the consent calendar? The chair hears none, and the resolutions on the consent calendar are adopted. Are there any motions to withdraw and commit?
Chair recognizes the senator from the 51st. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the Senate engross SB 119. I ask for a unanimous consent that we engross SB 119. Will the secretary read the caption for Senate Bill 119? Senate Bill 119 by Senator Albers of the 56th and others. A bill will be titled Enactment Article 3 of Chapter 5 of Title 28 of the OCGA relating to fiscal bills generally serves to require an economic analysis prior to the introduction or amendment of legislation containing tax incentives or modifying or extending existing tax incentives to provide for definitions and for other purposes. Mr. President, that concludes the order. Senator from the 51st has asked for unanimous consent that Senate Bill 119 be engrossed. Is there objection? There is objection. Would you like to speak to the motion? Would not speak to it. All right, at this time we will vote on the motion. All those in favor will stand, rise, and be counted. Reverse. The yeas are 29, the nays are 19. The motion has carried. And Senate Bill 119 is engrossed. We're now moving on to the rules calendar. Will the Secretary read the caption to Senate Bill 153? Senate Bill 153 by Senator Harper of the 7th and others. A bill we titled Act of Title 35 of the OCJ relating to law enforcement officers and agencies so as to provide for the comprehensive regulation of trauma scene cleanup services to provide for definitions, to provide for registration requirements, to provide for call fees, to provide for penalties for violations and for other purposes. Mr. President, the Senate Committee on Regulated Industries and Utilities offers the following substitute to Senate Bill 153, a bill be titled Enactment Title 35 of the OCGA relating to law enforcement officers and agencies, so as to provide for the comprehensive regulation of trauma scene cleanup services and for other purposes. Mr. President, that concludes the order. Chair would like to recognize the Senator from Osceola to speak to Senate Bill 153. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the Senate, uh, Senate Bill 153 uh, deals with uh, the registration of trauma scene cleanup uh, companies that, that provide those services uh, commercially. Um, as many of you, uh, some of you may know, uh, in instances where families are hit with, with situations um, where their services are needed, those, those families are at their most vulnerable, and this makes sure that those companies that they're hiring to provide those services uh, are, are appropriate um, and they have been through certain processes. Uh, it simply requires registering with GBI. They have to go through a background check and fingerprinting. A surety bond and liability insurance are required. Uh, and they're, they're also responsible for the acts of the employees uh, whenever they're contracting services in regards to biomedical waste. Uh, I think you would all agree it's important to protect individuals in our state from predatory practices, uh, and I think this bill goes a long way in doing that. Uh, there are a number of companies across our state, 29 I know that we have a list of that support the underlying measure, um, and uh, Mr. President, that's what the bill does. I think this is an orderly process for the business sector to safeguard the individuals across our state, and if there are any questions, I would take those. If not, I'll yield the wheel. You have a question. Chair recognizes the senator from the 23rd. Senator Yield. I will. Does this affect cleanup uh, after natural disasters? There, there, y y if, if it deals with biomedical waste, it would. However, there is a provision in the bill that would allow the GBI to issue temporary permits to help in those situations. You have no more questions, Senator. Thank you, Mr. President. The question is on the adoption of the committee substitute. Is there objection to adoption of the committee substitute? Hearing none, the committee substitute is adopted. 
Does any other senator wish to speak for or against the measure? The chair hears none, and the previous question is ordered. Is there objection or agreeing to the report of the committee which is favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none, the report of the committee is agreed to. Shall the main question be now put? Are there any objections? The chair hears none, and the main question is ordered. Shall this bill now pass by substitute? The question is on the passage of the bill by substitute. All those in favor of the bill will vote yea, opposed nay. The secretary will unlock the machine. On the passage of the bill, the yeas are 50, the nays are for this bill having received. The requisite constitutional majority is therefore passed by substitute. Will the secretary read the caption of Senate Bill 31? Senate Bill 31 by Senator Retta the 33rd and others. A bill will be titled and acted in Chapter 1 of Title 35 of the OCGA relating to general provisions regarding law enforcement officers and agencies so as to clarify that law enforcement officers should not be liable at law for any action or actions done while performing any duty at the scene of an emergency under certain circumstances to provide for definition, to provide for no liability of law enforcement officers for rescuing persons or pets out of certain vehicles and for other purposes. Mr. President, that concludes the order. Chair would like to recognize the Senator from the 33rd to speak to Senate Bill 31. Thank you, Mr. President, my fellow senators, colleagues, friends, and y'all. This Senate Bill 31 is an immunity for law enforcement officers rescuing people or pets trapped in motor vehicles. This legislation would provide civil immunity for law enforcement officers for the rescue of people or pets trapped in motor vehicles when there is a clear and imminent danger or threat to the person or pets, life, or health. This bill is endorsed by the police chief of Cobb County. It is also endorsed by the executive director of the chief of police for the state of Georgia. And if you support law enforcement, our men and women, I encourage you to vote for this bill. Mr. President, I yield well. You have no questions. Does any other senator wish to speak for or against the measure? The chair hears none and the previous question is ordered. Is there objection or agreeing to the report of the committee which is favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none and the report of the committee is agreed to. Shall the main question be now put? Are there any objections? The chair hears none and the main question is ordered. Shall this bill now pass? The question is on the passage of the bill. All those in favor of the bill will vote yea, oppose nay. The secretary will unlock the machine.
On the passage of the bill, the yeas are 54, the nays are zero. This bill having received the requisite constitutional majority is therefore passed. Mr. Secretary, will you read the caption of Senate Bill 60? Senate Bill 60 by Senator Martin of the Ninth and others. A bill will be titled an act in Part 15 of Article 6 of Chapter 2 of Title 20 of the OCGA relating to miscellaneous provisions under the Quality Basic Education Act so as to provide for guidelines and other relevant materials to inform high school students participating in interscholastic athletic activities about the nature and warning signs of sudden cardiac arrest and for other purposes. Mr. President, the Senate Committee on Education and Youth offers the following substitute to Senate Bill 60, a bill we titled an act amend Part 15 of Article 6 of Chapter 2 of Title 20 of the OCGA relating to miscellaneous provisions under the Quality Basic Education Act so as to provide for guidelines and other relevant materials to inform high school students participating in interscholastic athletic activities about the nature and warning signs of sudden cardiac arrest to provide for definition, to provide for informational meaning, to provide for removal from an athletic activity under certain circumstances, and to establish return to play policies and for other purposes. Mr. President, that concludes the order. Chair would like to recognize the Senator from the 9th to speak to Senate Bill 60. Thank you, Mr. President. In August of 2017, Nick Blakely, a highly decorated high school running back and safety from Lawrenceville, com collapsed after complaining of not feeling well at a Stetson College football practice. He was a redshirt freshman linebacker in seemingly perfect health. He had a promising college career ahead of him, and he had a way of brightening every room he walked into. In January of 2013, Jeremy Nelson, a promising middle school basketball forward from Buford, collapsed on the bench during a Gwinnett County League All-Star game. Jeremy was a kind young man, and like Nick, had a magnetic personality that drew people to him. He was 12 years old the exact age of my son, and he had his whole life ahead of him. Sadly, both boys left this world far too soon. My hope is that we can help other parents, family members, coaches, and peers not have to go through this pain, the pain that those who knew both of these young men, they had to experience. We can do this through better training of warning signs of sudden cardiac arrest for coaches, players, and participants. In addition, we can set up protocols similarly to the way we set up concussion protocols a few years ago to make sure that young athletes that show these symptoms get the correct medical care that they need before being cleared to return to action on the courts or on the fields. SB 60 sets up parameters for this and asks for your favorable consideration for the passage of this important bill. I will yield for questions. You have no questions. I yield the well. Oh, you have a question that just popped up at the last second. If you'd like to yield. I will yield. Chair recognizes the Senator from the 38th. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, Will the chairman yield? I will yield. I'm looking at lines 46 um, that talks about the informational meetings and then the next lines 51 through 54. I, I want clarification on exactly are there specific guidelines that we are asking them to cover in these twice yearly meetings? Because um, I, 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 maybe I haven't gotten to that section yet. but. I the guidelines are set up by the Department of Education or either a nonprofit athletic association if they are set up to do the same thing. So those would be set up by those. Um, and, and it is set, you know, we're talking about um, the following symptoms. We want more awareness on these symptoms, which are fainting or seizures during exercise, unexplained shortness of breath, chest pains, dizziness, racing heart rate, or extreme fatigue. So that's what it's about. And we. Um, I don't know if that answers, I guess maybe that answers your question. Yes, I, I just wanted to know specifically what they were looking for, because we have had a number of um, young people mm -hmm. to have, you know, as you mentioned already. And we, you know, in, in that paragraph B, beginning on line 32, we tasked the Department of Education to, um, to create guidelines and other relevant materials, and, and that's what we're talking about. Okay, have we, excuse me, if you further yield. I will yield. Um, have we asked them to report back to us as to what those guidelines might be so we can be aware? It is not in this legislation that I'm aware of, but I can follow up as Chair of Education. Thank you very much. You have no more questions. Thank you, Mr. President. I yield the well. <laughs> Twice. The question is on the adoption of the committee substitute. Is there objection to adoption of the committee substitute? 
Hearing none, the committee substitute is adopted. Does any other senator wish to speak to or against the measure? The chair would like to recognize the senator from the 48th. Thank you, Mr. President. I rise today to urge this body to pass Senate Bill 60, and I'll tell you why. Just a couple weeks ago, my daughter, who plays soccer at a very high level, club soccer, suffered a concussion. The interesting part is that she didn't really show the signs of a concussion, and but for the concussion protocol, she would have continued to play, and who knows what the injury would have been. My understanding of this bill from the Senator of the Ninth is that this will have a similar protocol um, as outlined for cardiac arrest. I think we all need to remember back in the day, for those of us who played sports, when you're in the sport and you're out there to win, you always want to get back on the field. And those kids are going to want to get back on the field. And the coaches want to win. So we have to have safeguards in place that stop, stop for a moment and take a breath so that we can protect our children. And so I commend all the folks who've worked on this bill and I think it's necessary, uh, having been the beneficiary of one of these protocols just recently myself. Thank you, Mr. President, I yield the whale. Is there objection to agreeing to the report of the committee which is favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall the main question be now put? Are there any objections? The chair hears none and the main question is ordered. Shall this question now pass by substitute? The question is on the passage of the bill by substitute. All those in favor of the bill will vote yay. Opposed nay. The secretary will unlock the machine. On the passage of the bill, the yeas are 54, the nays are zero. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed by substitute. The Secretary will read the caption of Senate Bill 83. Senate Bill 83 by Senator Moles, the 53rd, and others of Bill Title Enactum in Part 2 of Article 6 of Chapter 2 of Title 20 of the OCGA, relating to competencies and core curriculum relative to quality basic education, so as revised provisions relating to elective courses in history and literature of the Old and New Testament eras and for other purposes. Mr. President, Senate Education and Youth Committee offers the following substitute to Senate Bill 83, a bill we titled enact in Part 2 of Article 6 of Chapter 2 of Title 20 of the OCGA, relating to competencies and core curriculum relative to quality basic education, so as to revise provisions relating to elective courses in history and literature of the Old and New Testament eras and for other purposes. Mr. President, that concludes the order. The chair would like to recognize the Distinguished Rules Chairman to speak to Senate Bill 83. Thank you, Mr. President. Members of the Senate, I bring to you Senate Bill 83. And uh, many of you may have a different position of this bill, but it's not what you think. This is not a preaching bill. This is a teaching bill. This bill is all about options and flexibility. Thank you, Senator from the 48. This bill expands the content of the existing law that allows uh, Georgia Public High Schools to have content and courses on Hebrew scriptures, Old Testament, New Testament, but it's not specific on how or where you get that information. And that's the key, this is options. The purpose is to teach students 
not only the continued support of uh, issues that they already have in this content, but also about the stories, about the people who made up the stories and how it affects our culture today and our society today and how it may affect us in the future. This is to teach students content about history, literature style, the scripture, the structure, and the influence of the Hebrew, the Hebrew scriptures and the New Testament on law, history, government, literature, art, music, customs, morals, values, and culture. This bill does not create a new requirement that schools must follow. However, it gives them options and flexibility. This is also not a bill to preach religion. Not at all. This bill is to tell the stories and how they affect our society today. Previously, the old law stated that courses may offer just history and literature, but there are more to this than meets the eye. And this, again, is about teaching all those things that I mentioned previously, but the flexibility and options that they have. Mr. President, it's actually that simple, but I'll be delighted to answer any questions that may be out there. Chair recognizes the senator from the 31st. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, does the chairman yield? Certainly. I was uh, reading through this. Is there any requirement in this bill that the teacher have knowledge about what they're teaching? Well, you know, uh, I doubt it that, but. You, I'm sorry? I doubt that is the case, but I would assume that the school system would find somebody a. Uh, um, uh, but faculty member that would want to teach such a course. But it does not require no, any knowledge not. of the subject matter. No, just like any other class that that's out there, but usually they have the knowledge they need. Chair recognizes the senator from the 38th. Thank you, Mr. President. Will the chairman yield? Certainly. Um, I think I understand that this says all public schools, which was the part of the original bill, um, grades nine and above make available to eligible students. Um, this additional, which we passed, I think, I guess, in 07. So this is not a mandatory, it is an elective class that they can take. That is correct. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. You have no more questions. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate your passage of this bill. Thank you, Ms. President. The question is on the adoption of the committee substitute. Is there objection to the adoption of the committee substitute? Hearing none, the committee substitute is adopted. Does any other senator wish to speak for or against the measure? The chair hears none, and the previous question is ordered. Is there objection to agreeing to the report of the committee which is favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none, and the report of the committee is agreed to. Shall the main question be now put? Are there any objections? The chair hears none, and the main question is ordered. Shall this bill now pass by substitute? The question is on the passage of the bill by substitute. All those in favor of the bill will vote yay. Opposed nay. The secretary will unlock the machine. On the passage of the bill, the yeas are 56, the nays are zero. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed by substitute. The Secretary will read the caption of Senate Bill 100. Senate Bill 100 by Senator Martin of the Ninth and others, a bill we titled an act in Part 1A of Article 2 of Tafage 5 of Title 46 of the OCGA, relating to telephone system for the physically impaired, so as to change certain provisions relating to the establishment, administration, and operation of the statewide dual party relay service and audible universal information access service and for other purposes. Mr. President, that concludes the order. 
Chair recognizes the Senator from the 9th to speak to Senate Bill 100. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm back. The Public Service Commission currently oversees a program that provides assistance that people who are hard of hearing and the need of, I'm sorry, let me start over. They oversee a program that provides assistance to people that are hard of hearing in need of devices to allow them to use their, telephone, their telephones. SB 100 just clarifies that devices allowable under this program may, in, may include devices for wireless devices. I will yield for any questions. You have no questions. Does any other senator wish to speak for or against the bill? The chair hears none, and the previous question is ordered. Is there objection to agreeing to the report of the committee which is favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall the main question be now put? Are there any objections? The chair hears none, and the main question is ordered. Shall this bill now pass? The question is on the passage of the bill. All those in favor of the bill will vote yea, oppose nay. The secretary will unlock the machine. For what purpose does the senator from the 11th rise? Pardon me, inquiry. State your inquiry. Is it not true that the senator from 9th has tried to learn from the senator from the 11th how to present a bill quickly, but he's failing miserably? The chair's still making up his mind. On the passage of the bill, the yeas are 55, the nays are zero. This bill having received the requisite constitutional majority is therefore passed. For what purpose does the senator from the 26th rise? Mr. President, I'd like to ask that the rules be suspended in order for a bill to be introduced, read, and assigned to a committee. Senator from the 26th has asked for the rules to be suspended. Will the uh, secretary read the bill? You approach the roster. Will the secretary read the caption?
Senate Bill 233 by Senator Lucas of the 26th and others, a bill be titled an act amend Article 7 of Chapter 8 of Title 34 of the OCGA relating to employment security benefits so as to increase the minimum and maximum weekly benefit amounts and for other purposes. That concludes the order. Senator from the 26th is asked that the rules be suspended and a bill be read and assigned to committee. Is there objection? Hearing no objection, Senate Bill 233 is assigned to insurance and labor. Will Secretary read the caption of Senate Bill 117? Senate Bill 117 by Senator Black of the 8th and others. A bill will be titled and acted in Article 1 of Chapter 20 of Title 47 of the OCGA, relating to the general provisions of the public retirement system standards law, so as to prohibit the passage of any law, rule, regulation, resolution, or ordinance that allows for creditable service in a retirement system that does not require an individual to pay the full actuarial cost of obtaining such creditable service and for other purposes. Mr. President, that concludes the order. Chair would like to recognize the Senator from the 8th to speak to Senate Bill 117. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> Senators, we have a serious problem with our retirement system. We have unfunded liabilities in the teacher's retirement system and a loan of over $25 billion. Uh, we have, that's nearly four times the bond indebtedness we, we're setting on. This is serious. Uh, one of the problems, and this is just a minor one, but this is an attempt to fix it. But one of the problems is we have some old statutes on the books that allows people to come in that have taught in other areas, in other states, uh, and they have credible service so they can buy into our retirement system at less than full actuarial value. Uh, I had the director of our teacher's retirement system give me an estimate on what this cost us last year, and his estimate was $30 million. We passed this house in the Senate last year, sent it over to the House. It got held up in ruse because of another little retirement bill from the House having to do with a certain person that didn't get going. And so it cost us $30 million last year. I'm going to send it back to him this year with y'all's help. Ask your favorable consideration on this bill. I'll entertain any questions anyone might have. You have no, oh, you have a question. Chair recognizes the senator from the 38th. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Chairman, you specifically gave the example of people coming into the state and buying into the system. Does it in any way, shape, form, or fashion affect any of the citizens of Georgia? Um, for example, well, they don't. Yes, any of the citizens of Georgia. I'm going to leave it with that one. <laughs> I think these would all be citizens of Georgia. They, these people that have gone over and, and of course, they would, they would become citizens in Georgia when they came in and took a job teaching. Uh, or, and this applies to the uh, employees' retirement system as well. But uh, they may have been, what, a, a large number of them are spouses of military that had been stationed around the country and taught school in other states, and uh, they didn't stay there long enough to uh, become vested in those systems. They got their money back, and they can come in here, and, and, and they can buy in, but they're buying in at less than full actuarial cost to the state. Okay. I appreciate that clarification. Will, will the um, Senator further yield? Yes. So this is only for individuals that come into the state of Georgia that have become Georgia citizens because they moved here. And primarily, we are finding the majority of them to be military families that have had to move around. And that, so you're asking them to pay full actuarial cost right. to buy into our system. Right. That's okay. correct. Thank you. Any other questions? You have no more questions. Thank you. Does any other senator wish to speak for or against the bill? The chair hears none and the previous question is ordered. Is there objection to agreeing to the report of the committee which is favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none and the report of the committee is agreed to. Shall the main question be now put? Are there any objections? The chair hears none and the main question is ordered. Shall this bill now pass? The question is on the passage of the bill. All those in favor of the bill will vote yea, oppose nay. The secretary will unlock the machine.
On the passage of the bill, the yeas are 55, the nays are zero. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. Mr. Secretary, will you read the caption of Senate Bill 119? Senate Bill 119 by Senator Albers of the 56th and others, a bill will be titled an act to amend Article 3 of Chapter 5 of Title 28 of those J relating to fiscal bills generally, so as to require an economic analysis prior to the introduction or amendment of legislation containing tax incentives or modifying or extending existing tax incentives and for other purposes. Mr. President, that concludes the order. Chair would like to recognize the Senator from Roswell to speak to Senate Bill 119. Thank you, Mr. President, for uh, your support on this important fiscal bill as well. Uh, as our governor and all the members of this caucus, this is a companion bill to what we passed last week, which was Senate Bill 120. In Senate Bill 119, we apply that same business case methodology to all new bills uh, to make sure we do a complete economic uh, analysis and impact prior to us uh, voting on that. This is great fiscal policy. It passed unanimously from the Senate last year as well. And if there are no questions, I will yield the well. You have a question. Chair recognizes the minority leader. Senator you? Yes, sir. Senator, how do we know that the methodology that will be done on the research and background of these bills will be effective and the resources needed for us to be able to trust the information will be provided? Thank you, Mr. Leader. That's a great question. We have worked closely with the state auditor as well as those at Georgia State University and the Fiscal Research Center uh, who have been a, a staple for giving us quality information in the past. And will this information be required on every bill? Uh, any new tax credit or uh, tax expenditure bill that will come through uh, as outlined on page two of this bill. So further yield. Yes, sir. <clears throat> so you think it's important that we get information on the financial impact of any bill uh, or well, legislation, whether it's tax in, tax cut or any bill? Uh, well, Senator, for this bill specifically we're talking about today, Senate Bill 119, this will go to any uh, tax credit or incentive. Thank you, Senator. I appreciate very much your work on this, and I hope that you will support your colleagues when they need fiscal notes on bills that uh, might be needed. Thank you. Chair recognizes the senator from the 36th. Thank you, Mr. President. Does Senator yield? Yes, Senator. Uh, uh, thank you, Senator, for, for the work that you've been doing uh, in regard to this subject matter. And I hope you can clarify for the body um, that the, the, the difference between bills that have a sunset in them, a, a fiscal, uh, the, a tax expenditure that has a sunset in it, and tax expenditures that are considered permanent because they don't have any end time uh, in the listed in, in the statutory language. Uh, how does the bill uh, as uh, that's before us today affect permanent tax yeah. expenditures that we have granted in this legislature? as opposed to the ones that have sunset language in them. Yes, yeah, Senator, I believe you might be referring to the bill we passed last week, which was Senate Bill 120 that had That's listed right. each one of those. Uh, for this bill, this is for any new tax credit or expenditure, no matter whether it be permanent uh, or have a sunset date, that this would have a total fiscal analysis completed. So this might have applied to that uh, bill we had the other day in committee. That's correct. On the uh, vouchers. Uh, no, ma'am, that would have applied to Senate Bill 120, which we passed last week in the Senate, uh, which uh, would look at tax expenditures on a rolling uh, several amount of years to make sure we always did an economic analysis prior to them right. coming up for a renewal. That's right. Uh, but you are in full support of the long-established precedent that we need to have fiscal notes for bills that have fiscal impact. I think it's a very important practice. Thank you. Do you yield for another question? I yield. Chair would like to recognize the senator from the 6th. Thank you, Mr. President. Will the senator yield? I yield. Now, with respect to this um, act, it seems to put into place a procedure for, that we have to follow when it comes to certain bills, correct? That is correct. And with respect to that, and just to clarify, rules of procedure passed by one legislature or statutory provisions governing the legislative process are not binding on a subsequent legislature, correct? 
I, I'm not sure if that would exactly apply in this instance, Senator. And, and will the Senator yield? I yield. And why not? Well, we have a lot of laws that we pass uh, that continue on past any one of our terms. Understanding that, but with respect to rules of procedure, um, anything that takes legislative form is not binding on the next legislature. I'm not sure I agree with you on that, Senator. Okay. Well, I can always show you Mason's manual, but thank you. You have no more questions. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd uh, ask for your favorable opinion, and I yield the will. Does any other senator wish to speak for or against the measure? The chair hears none, and the previous question is ordered. Is there objection to agreeing to the report of the committee which is favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall the main question be now put? Are there any objections? The chair hears none, and the main question is ordered. Shall this bill now pass? The question is on the passage of the bill. All those in favor of the vote bill will vote yea, oppose nay. The secretary will unlock the machine. For what purpose does the senator for the 19th rise? He waves. On the passage of the bill, the yeas are 55, the nays are zero. This bill having received the requisite constitutional majority is therefore passed. <laughs> Ms. Secretary, will you read the caption? Is Senate Bill 140. Senate Bill 140 by Senator Harbis, Senate of the 15th, and others. A bill will be titled Act Amendment Article 3 of Chapter 13 of Title 45 of the OCJ relating to the World War I Centennial Commission so as to extend the sunset provision and for other purposes. Mr. President, that concludes the order. Chair would like to recognize the senator from the 15th to speak to Senate Bill 140. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this is literally a very simple bill, a straightforward bill that simply extends the sunset provision from July of this year to the end of, of this year, December 31st, simply because the people uh, trying to set up the statute could not finish that in time, and they needed more time. But I, I wanted to speak to the underlying reason for the extension that, and the person who is the center of that focus. It's uh, someone that uh, we hold a lot of esteem in Columbus, Georgia. That's Eugene Jacques Bullard, who may have been the 6,950th French military pilot during his wings during World War I. But he was remembered as history's very first African-American aviator. During his career as a fighter pilot, the Columbus, Georgia native reportedly brought down as many as two German aircraft, however they were unconfirmed. Although never earning the distinction of ace, Bullard still won many of his adopted country's highest military decorations, including the Legion of Honor. And uh, he, after the war, he became very good friends with a lot of jazz figures like uh, Louis Armstrong. Yet despite his acclaim in France, Bullitt received virtually no recognition in America. Worse, after returning to the U.S. as a wounded combat veteran and an aviation trailblazer, he died penniless and in obscurity. So was the fate of the black swallow of death. He is recognized today with a portrait at the Columbus, Georgia airport. I wanted to make sure we understood that we had been uh, very careful to recognize this very worthwhile warrior for freedom. Bullard again answered the call for the French when he joined the French Army in time to see action in World War II. But he was grievously wounded in the defense of Orleans. And as that country fell to the Nazis, he was evacuated to Spain and was eventually 
uh, repatriated to the United States of America. In 1949, he was one of more than a dozen people attacked on a concert in New York. The 54-year-old bullet then was beaten by two policemen who even that was captured on film. But more importantly, in 1954, he briefly returned to France for the 40th anniversary of World War I. He received a hero's welcome for his service. He was named for, to the Legion of Honor and was made a guest of the French military commendation. My point of view is, he, uh, he was a man in search of a war for freedom and he found one in France who recognized him and thank God his country, the United States of America, eventually recognized this uh, very famous warrior from Columbus, Georgia. So I appreciate you passing this bill. Uh, if there are no questions, Mr. President, I yield the well. You have no questions. Does any other senator wish to speak for or against the bill? The chair hears none, and the previous question is ordered. Is there objection to agreeing to the report of the committee which is favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none, and the report of the committee is agreed to. Shall the main question be now put? Are there any objections? The chair hears none, and the main question is ordered. Shall this bill now pass? The question is on the passage of the bill. All those in favor of the bill will vote yay. Opposed nay. The secretary will unlock the machine. On the passage of the bill, the yeas are 56, the nays are zero. This bill having received the requisite constitutional majority is therefore passed. Secretary, please read the caption of Senate Bill 142. Senate Bill 142 by Senator Walker of the 20th and others, a bill we titled an act in Chapter 24, Title 33 of the OCGA, relating to insurance generally so as to require that a statement indicating that the subscriber's health policy is fully insured is included on the subscriber's health insurance identification card and for other purposes. Mr. President, that concludes the order. Chair recognizes the Senator from the 20th to speak to Senate Bill 142. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, a lot of factors go into the high cost of health care, and we spend a lot of time and have had a lot of bills trying to address the high cost of health care, and it's something we'll continue to work on. One of the factors is the providers have to spend so much money trying to figure out who's paying them. They spend a lot of time and, and staff time and effort and money trying to chase down uh, uh, receivables and, and get paid for their services. Senate Bill 142 is a, a small attempt to help providers uh, understand who's paying them and have some transparency and help them collect their money. Um, line 14, you'll see adds dental insurer as a definition, and line 17 adds fully insured as a definition. But the meat of the bill is if it's a fully insured plan that's regulated and subject to the laws of the state of Georgia, the prompt pay law and the assignment of benefit rules and laws, uh, it will say on the card that it's a, a fully insured health care plan. This will help our providers uh, be more efficient in their uh, business operations. Uh, I have the support of the Georgia Dental Association, the Georgia Medical Association. Uh, no real pushback from the insurance industry. I think it's a good bill. I ask for your favorable consideration. If there are any questions, I'll be happy to take them. Otherwise, I will yield the well. Chair recognizes the senator from the 48th. Does the gentleman yield? I sure do, Senator. Um, Senator, uh, isn't it true that this bill would help with surprise billing that a lot of uh, consumers have by virtue of when they go see the dentist and they think something's covered and then 
they get a bill and they find out that it's not. I think it helps both the consumer and the provider in that case and, and gives transparency to who, who's responsible for paying the bill. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Any other Chair, Chair recognizes the Senator from the ninth. Thank you, Mr. President. Will you yield? I certainly do. Uh, Isn't it true that I have a late arriving amendment that we've spoken about and you are agreeable with, along with the stakeholders on this bill? Uh, yes, I'm sure the senator knows of what he speaks. Do you need me to delay or tell any stories? Is the amendment ready? You have no more questions. All right, Senator Yields as well. Thank you. Chair recognizes the senator from the second. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Senate Bill 42, many people think is a... Uh, a dental bill, and, and it's not. This bill is, is supported by the Georgia Chiropractors Association, it's supported by the Georgia uh, Optom um, Optometrists Association, the Georgia Medical Association. It's a good bill for all Georgians. I urge all members to support it. Thank you. We have an, we have an amendment. Will the Secretary read the amendment number one? Amendment one, number one by Senator Martin of the Ninth offers the following amendment to Senate Bill 142 by deleting the line, by deleting the period and adding the following at the end of line 59, except that this requirement shall not apply to any licensed group model health maintenance organization with an exclusive medical group contract. Mr. President, that concludes the order. Chair recognizes the senator from the ninth to speak to his amendment. Thank you, Mr. President. This this deals with uh, HMO, and, and you, you are all familiar with Kaiser Permanente. Because they own their own facilities, their doctors work for them. Their members go to Kaiser Permanente for this coverage. Uh, they also only issue a card one time when you uh, when you sign up with them. They don't reissue these cards every time. So for them, this is really uh, not necessary because when you go to Kaiser, you're dealing with Kaiser and they understand everything about their program. So I'll yield for any questions um, or yield the well. Chair recognizes the senator from the 48th. This Does the gentleman yield? I will yield. I should say the chairman. I apologize. The chairman yield? Yes. Uh, could you please explain to me how is this a burden on Kaiser Permanente to print a card that says you have full bill of fence or not. It, it, it's not typically a burden. It, it's, it's, it's a burden, but it's also unnecessary for Kaiser Permanente due to the fact that when you go to Kaiser, you're going to Kaiser for your, for your doctor care, for your doctor visit, for your anything that they provide. Um, what they do in their business model is they actually issue their cards, their, their, ID, their coverage cards. At the time of issuance, you do not get a new card each and every year. So they would have to issue a brand new card for every one of their members all at once, at one time. So, um, so for them, it's really it would it'd be a large it'd be a large exercise and something they don't normally do. Does the gentleman further yield? So what you're saying to me is that Kaiser automatically, 100% covers the dental. Therefore, this card is not necessary. No, no, no. The, it this bill applies more to dental. It applies to health insurance as well. So that's the reason health insurers, other health insurers aren't, they reprint their cards every year. They don't have the same issues. Okay. So this also deals with health insurance. So that's what this is with regards to. Does a gentleman further you? I will. Uh, since I didn't understand that to, to apply to health insurance, can you show me where it does? I'd have to come down. I can, I can come down there and show you as soon as we're, 
as soon as I yield the well. I'm glad if, to. If you don't mind, I'd like that yeah. very much. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Appreciate it. Chair recognizes the senator from the 40th. Well, the senator yields. I will. Uh, isn't it true that I am a member of Kaiser Permanente and have been for a long time, and I understand why this is not necessary to be on their card? The senator is knowledgeable of what she speaks, I'm sure. Chair recognizes the senator from the 12th. She waves. Chair recognizes the senator from the 20th. Well, Senator Yale. Be, be glad to. Uh, Senator, is it not true that I'm in favor of your amendment? It is true. Thank you very Thank much. You. you have no more questions. I yield the well. Thank you. Does any other senator wish to speak to the amendment? The question is on the adoption of the amendment. Is there objection to adoption of the amendment? Hearing none, the floor amendment is adopted. Does any other senator wish to speak for or against the measure? The chair hears none and the previous question is ordered. Is there objection to agreeing to the report of the committee which is favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none and the report of the committee is agreed to. Shall the main question be now put? Are there any objections? The chair hears none and the main question is ordered. Shall this bill now pass as amended? The question is on the passage of the bill as amended. All those in favor of the bill will vote yay. Opposed, nay. The secretary will unlock the machine. On the passage of the bill, the yeas are 56, the nays are zero. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed as amended. <laughs> Mr. Secretary, will you read the caption of Senate Bill 157? Senate Bill 157 by Senator Kennedy of the 18th and others, a bill entitled an act in Chapter 8 of Title 45 of the OCGA, Willing to accounting for public funds has to specify when funds shall be considered to be held by a depository to require the State Depository Board to establish certain policies and procedures relating to deposit and placement programs and for other purposes. Mr. President, that concludes the order. Chair recognizes the Senator from the 18th to speak to Senate Bill 157. Thank you, Mr. President. Good afternoon, colleagues. You, you may have received complaints from back home from your community bankers and folks that have the non-national banks in your community about the difficulty that they have in receiving funds from a governmental entity. That may be your county, it may be your city, it may be your library, it may be something related to state funds. And the reason for that is based on certain banking regulations that we have in the state. Uh, Deposits in a bank from a governmental entity have to be collateralized. They have to be fully collateralized, unlike money that we may put into a bank account. So the money that, that, the, that for example, your city or your county puts in has to be collateralized in effect to a rate of about 100%. There is, you may remember, in 2017, we passed the multi-state bank pledging pool, which allowed for a way for banks to cooperate and create a pool of money so that you could have additional collateral being used for purposes of receiving certain governmental funds. The problem is that bank pool is a very, it, it's a large uh, administrative entity, if you will, that doesn't lend itself very well for community bankers to utilize or go into the multi-state bank pledging pool. So what that means is a lot of community banks don't utilize that. So when they receive funds, if they choose to receive, for example, your county's funds, they have to fully collateralize those to the tune of about 110%. What does all this mean? 
It means for a community bank to receive local government funds, it costs them more money than it is worth to receive the deposit. So for that reason, you may find, as I said at the top of my comments, that you may find some of your local folks telling you, gee, we can't really get a bank locally to receive our county deposits, our state deposits. So what do we need? Well, we've got a solution for that. And this, the bill that I'm presenting to you today provides that solution because it provides for the deposit placement program. And that simply allows for banks that are part of the deposit placement program to cooperate in a way so that for the amounts above the $250,000 FDIC insured threshold, those can be collateralized by other banks. What does this mean? It means two things. It means, number one, that your community bankers now are going to be more likely not only to be able, but they're actually being incented to receive money from your local governments. And second, it's an increased chance and a likelihood that those funds will be kept in the community and can be redeployed for purposes of making loans. Um, pleased to tell you that the Community Bankers Association is in favor of this. The Georgia Bankers Association is in favor of this. Uh, the GMA came and spoke at the hearing and is in favor of it. Uh, your counties, your cities, everyone that I know of along those lines are in favor of it. Uh, the NFIB is in favor of it. The state treasurer has approved the language, and the Georgia Banking Department has also approved the language for this bill. In sum, we didn't receive any information from anyone through the committee process, nor have I heard of anyone who's against this bill. So hopefully, it's, uh, if you understand it, it's a logical approach. Your folks back home are going to be happy with it, and it'll be a, a, a good move forward to help our local governments have more options on where they can deposit their funds for their operating accounts and a place to park their money. Mr. President, I'm happy to answer any questions. You have a couple of questions. Chair recognizes the senator from the 48th. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, does the gentleman yield? Yes, I'm happy to yield to the senator from the 48th. Um, just to make sure I understand, you're talking about collateralization. Is the money still going to be 100% collateralized, such as it, such that it's protected? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Chair recognizes the senator from the 23rd. Does the senator yield? I do for the good judiciary chairman. Um, just to explain in simple terms, how does the program work? Sure. So if you were, for example, to have a, one of your counties had a $500,000 deposit. The first $250,000 is protected by the FDIC. The second $250,000, if the bank was a member of the deposit placement program, those funds could be placed with another bank outside of that bank, but it's part of the deposit placement program so that the second two hundred fifty dollars not only is collateralized, but also has the FDIC FDIC coverage for insurance purposes. You have no more questions. Thank you, Mr. President. I appreciate your consideration of this and vote for this bill. I yield the well. Does any other senator wish to speak for or against the bill? The chair hears none and the previous question is ordered. Is there objection or agreeing to the report of the committee which is favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none and the report of the committee is agreed to. Shall the main question be now put? Are there any objections? The chair hears none and the main question is ordered. Shall this bill now pass? The question is on the passage of the bill. All those in favor of the bill will vote yay. Opposed, nay. The secretary will unlock the machine.
On the passage of the bill, the yeas are 55, the nays are zero. This bill having received the requisite constitutional majority is therefore passed. Mr. Secretary, please read the caption of Senate Bill 168. Senate Bill 168 by Senator Kirk of the 13th and others, a bill entitled enacted in Chapter 26 of Title 43 of the OCGA, relating to nurses, so as to revise certain definitions relating to nurses to clarify requirements relating to granting authorization to holders of multi state licenses to engage in advanced nursing practices to repeal a provision relating to the nurse licensure compact and for other purposes. Mr. President, that concludes the order. Chair would like to recognize the Senator from the 13th to speak to Senate Bill 168. Thank you, Mr. President. I don't know if you've been paying attention, but we've already gone through 10 bills in record time. So, so I'm gonna slow it down a little bit because uh, I know you all wanna be here as long as we can today. I'll take this line by line. Uh, no, actually, this is a nurse compact bill that 31 states participate in in the country. We passed this bill last year. Unfortunately, some language got added which could kick us out of the compact let me tell you how important this is to our state. This affects 1,400 nurses, and there are, are multiple vacancies in hospitals that could be filled by nurses through the compact as well. So failure to pass this would be a, a blow to the health uh, healthcare industry. I'll just briefly go through. Section one deals with APRNs, advanced practice registered nurses. Section two deals with licensed LPNs, licensed practical nurses. Section three deals with RNs. And section four is a section that um, we're taking some language out that was added last year so that uh, we will not be excluded from the com compact. Mr. President, I'll yield for any questions. That was very quick. Thank you. Chair, uh, you have no questions. Wonderful, I ask your favorable consideration. Does any other senator wish to speak for or against the bill? The chair hears none and the previous question is ordered. Is there objection to agreeing to the report of the committee which is favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none and the report of the committee is agreed to. Shall the main question be now put? Are there any objections? The chair hears none and the main question is ordered. Shall this bill now pass? The question is on the passage of the bill. All those in favor of the bill will vote yea, oppose nay. The secretary will unlock the machine. On the passage of the bill, the yeas are 55, the nays are zero. This bill having received, the requisite constitutional majority is therefore passed. Mr. Secretary, can you please read the caption of Senate Bill 170? Senate Bill 170 by Senator Thompson the 14th and others. The bill will be titled enactment in Article 1 of Chapter 3 of Title 50 of the OCGA, railing the state and other flags, so it designate and designate the honor and remember flag as the state's emblem of the service and sacrifice of the members of the armed forces to provide for the display of the honor and remember flag at designated state-owned properties on certain designated days to provide that such flags are manufactured in the United States to provide that local governments may display the honor and remember flag to provide for the adoption of guidelines for the display of such flags to provide for the procurement and distribution of such flags and for other purposes. Mr. President, that concludes the order. Chair would like to recognize the senator from the 14th to speak to Senate Bill 170. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. On your desk, you have a copy of a flag. What this flag is, is the honor and remembrance flag. And that simply is a flag that we are designating for those families that have lost loved ones that have served in the military. 
If there are no questions, Mr. President, I'll yield well. Chair recognizes the senator from the 38th. Thank you, Mr. President. Will the gentleman yield, please? I will. Is there a cost associated with this flag? I didn't see a fiscal note or anything that, so there is, it's gonna bear the, count, the county or, or the city or whatever to pay this? There is not. No cost at all? There is no cost to the state. Okay, but there will be a cost to local governments to do well, this. The local governments not to do that. What this does is it allows local governments to be able to honor and fly the flag, but it's permissive. Will the gentleman still yield? I will. So who's paying for the flag? Um, well, the local, the local um, group that, the Gold Star families, Gold Star members, they have this already in place. In Thank states. you, Mr. Thank you. You have no more questions. Does any other senator wish to speak for or against the bill? The chair hears none and the previous question is ordered. Is there objection to agreeing to the report of the committee which is favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none and the report of the committee is agreed to. Shall the main question be now put? Are there any objections? The chair hears none and the main question is ordered. Shall this bill now pass? The question is on the passage of the bill. All those in favor of the bill will vote yea, oppose nay. The secretary will unlock the machine. On the passage of the bill, the yeas are 56, the nays are zero. This bill having received the requisite constitutional majority is therefore passed. Will the secretary read the final bill of the day, Senate Bill 191. Senate Bill 191 by Senator Kennedy of the 18th and others, a bill be titled an act in Title 15 of the OCGA relating to courts and code section 472263 of the OCGA relating to credit for certain past service as an assistant district attorney or employee of the prosecuting attorney's counsel, payment of employee contributions and credit for service as a full-time law assistant, so as to rename law assistants as law clerks and staff attorneys and for other purposes. Mr. President, that concludes the order. Chair would like to recognize the senator from the 18th to speak to Senate Bill 191. Thank you, Mr. President, and good afternoon, colleagues. Good news. I'm going to be brief, and this is our last bill for the day. Um, Senate Bill 191. A lot of folks come to the well and say, hey, this is a simple little bill, but this one truly is. Changes, in essence, one word and one term in our code. Um, there are three sections to the bill. Section one, two, three, actually four, excuse me. Um, and it simply changes the word law assistant to law clerk. The existing verbiage that we have relates to days gone by when folks fresh out of law school and young lawyers were called law assistants. And today, those folks that are coming out of school with a JD degree are law clerks uh, or sometimes also called staff attorneys. So if you're wondering about the genesis of this, well, the superior courts, uh, the judges of our superior courts were concerned about making sure that we had the correct verbiage so there wouldn't be any concern going forward with regard to those terms as they're found elsewhere in the code. The Superior Court judges asked that we make this change so that we had clarity and also certainty going forward. 
The Supreme Court also had the same request and the Georgia Court of Appeals had the same request. So you'll see those three different sections in the bill simply changes the outdated usage of the word law assistant, which connotes a staff member to a law clerk or a staff attorney. That's kind of the history on this. It's just that simple and straightforward, but I'll be happy to answer any questions. Mr. President. Chair recognizes the Senator from the 38th for a question. Thank you, Mr. President. Will the Senator to yield? I certainly do for my seatmate to the rear there. I know you all would be happy that this is the last bill and I don't get to ask any more questions today. <laughs> um, is there any monetary benefit for us changing this to a more um, more defined law clerk or staff attorney does that help in pensions or anything in the future for the individual senator great question and, and the answer is no I, I do not believe that it does um, it, and it really goes back to the origins of the code section that it des describes for example for the superior court level OCGA 15628 has for a long time said that a chief judge of each judicial circuit is authorized to employ either one law assistant or one court administrator. So what's been happening for a long time now is that law assistant has been someone with a JD degree. So they've, they've been in, in, they have been employing a law clerk for some time now, but just doing it under the guise of it being the law assistant. So to clarify any question there. Uh, about the status of who that is, but I, no, I, to answer your question directly, I, no. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. I appreciate the question. Chair recognizes the Senator from the 48th. Does the Senator yield? I certainly do for my friend from Gwinnett. Um, having heard um, uh, the Chairman from the 8th speak earlier today about deficits in the retirement system, isn't it true that this bill is specifically uh, drafted to not create any additional liability to that system? Senator, that's correct. I appreciate your clarifying that to the extent my opening remarks did not do that. In fact, you'll look on line 64 and 65, and also for the senator from the 38th, this may partly address your question as well, uh, wherein uh, it says that upon payment of the Board of the Trustees, such amount as determined by the actuary, as necessary to grant benefit without creating any accrued actuarial liability as to this retirement system. So, Senator, I appreciate your concern for fiscal responsibility for our state, for these type of employees as, as well as, as others, and I appreciate the question. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes, ma'am. Chair recognizes the Senator from the 31st. Thank you, Mr. President. Does the senator yield? I certainly do for the senator from the 31st. So all throughout this bill where the phrase <clears throat> law assistance occurred, it was stricken and replaced with law clerks and staff attorneys. <clears throat> Except in the section of the bill that deals with the retirement code, <clears throat> and then you add law clerk and staff attorney without striking law assistance. So can you explain why that inconsistency in the bill? Senator, I appreciate the question. I think in the context of beginning at line 60 where you're reading from, um, any member who is subject to 47.2.262, and of course that encompasses the retirement system, may receive up to four years of credible service under this code section for past service as a full-time law assistant. So to put proper context on that, you would not want to exclude someone who had been a law clerk but we're changing the name on them and it would fall to their detriment to not get the benefits that they would as a law clerk if you deem them to have formerly been a law assistant. But if you're redefining essentially law assistant to be a law clerk or staff attorney, wouldn't that be covered here? Well, it wouldn't, Senator. The difference in sections one, two, and three are all prospective changing the name you focused on the one section that is retrospective with regard to, if you'll look on line 61, for credible service under this for past service as a full-time law assistant. That's what they used to be called. And so if you change the name but exclude them that were subject of the name change, you may be denying someone their retirement benefits that they should have and may already be vested. 
So then, is this uh, adding all staff attorneys to the retirement system? It's just adding those that currently qualify, and that's why the clarif clarification at line 64 that this creates no accrued actuarial liability to the retirement system. But that's existing code. That is existing code on line 64. Yes, but it's also applicable to, as this goes into effect, with law clerk or staff attorney being the, the operative identified title, it still can't change or create li actuarial liability. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you for the question, Senator. Chair recognizes the Senator from Columbus from the 29th. Your seatmate waves. You have no more questions. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. I encourage your support for the final bill of today. Thank you. I yield the will. Any other senator wish to speak for or against the bill? The chair hears none, and the previous question is ordered. Is there objection or agreeing to the report of the committee which is favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall the main question be now put? Are there any objections? The chair hears none, and the main question is ordered. Shall this bill now pass? The question is on the passage of the bill. All those in favor of the bill will vote yea, opposed nay. The secretary will unlock the machine. On the passage of the bill, the yeas are 55, the nays are zero. This bill having received the requisite constitutional majority is therefore passed. <laughs> Chair recognizes the majority leader. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the Senate stand adjourned until 10 o'clock on Tuesday, March 5th. Mr. Secretary, please read the announcements. Rules will meet upon adjournment in 450 of the Capitol. Insurance on labor was canceled. Education and youth was canceled. Public safety was canceled. And judiciary is canceled. Mr. President, that concludes the order. Are there any other announcements? The Majority Leader has moved that the Senate stand adjourned until 10 a.m. on Tuesday, March 5th, 2019. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. no. The ayes have it, and the Senate stands adjourned.